It's my mother's birthday today I'm on my way with the lovely bouquet For me it's the happiest day I won't be late at her old cottage gate I'll greet her with a kiss For that I know she cares And then I'll say God bless you Many happy returns These roses will soon fade away but she will know what they mean to convey My heart is singing a happy refrain Blue skies are smiling above I'm going home to my mother To the one that I love I'll greet her with a kiss For that I know she yearns and then I say, God bless you, many happy returns. These roses will soon fade away, but she will know what they mean to convey. But she will know what they mean to convey. For it's my mother's birthday today. Camera, camera. I don't like this thing. <laughs> See you later. I told you. I was not going to escape this.
I just want to announce that you'll be glad to know why I'm not saying this Mass today. It's Father Hugh Clark will be saying this Mass, and he's saying it for a very special reason, and that is because his mother is 100 years of age today. And here she is sitting in the front seat at the church, and she's very, very welcome to our Mass this morning. One other little announcement, and that is that um, there's a special collection today, as you probably know. Now, it's all the one collection. There's no extra collections. So I hope you remember to put into your envelope, as well as the church collection, the contribution for St. Patrick's College, Minute. If you forgot to do that, then you can still uh, make up for it by leaving in a donation to the Parochial House for Minute during the week, if you have forgotten. Uh, I think that's all I want to say now. Uh, perhaps you could stand and the choir will sing the opening hymn. of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. To help us offer our Sunday Mass worthily, let's tell God we're truly sorry for all our sins. Let's ask for his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I fail to do. And I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Our reading, first reading, a reading from the prophet Ezekiel. When the sinners renounce his sin, he shall certainly live. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. You object. What the Lord does is unjust. Listen, you house of Israel, is what I do unjust? Is it not what you do that is unjust? When the upright man renounces his integrity to commit sin and dies because of this, he dies because of the evil that he himself has committed. When the sinner renounces sin to become law-abiding and honest, he deserves to live. He has chosen to renounce all his previous sins. He shall certainly live. He shall not die. This is the word of the Lord. For our Holy Father, Pope John Paul II, as his world travels, will do good for our church and for ourselves. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For my mother on her 100th birthday, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear us. For the elderly of this parish, and for the sick, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own intentions, 
and just make them in silence. And for these intentions of ours, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the deceased of a parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We're asked to remember particularly in our prayers the following deceased, John Quinn, formerly of Cavan, Rose McCullough, Cyan Mills, Robert McGinley, Hollins, Ballandrite, James McGavigan, Fort Hall, Anthony Barrow, Dublin, Josephine Stewart, Glenn Smoyle, Andrew Kilday, Newton, Thomas Patrick Maguire, Tober, and William Kennedy, Strabane. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Heavenly Father, we've placed our petitions before you. We are confident that our prayers will be heard and our requests granted, since we ask in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus. Amen. with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. <coughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
speech for a minute or two. Well, the clerks and the porters are here this morning to celebrate my mother's 100th birthday. She was born on the 27th day of September in 1887. That's just one year after the telephone was invented. So she's one year younger than the telephone. I can't think of anything else she's younger than. But she's here in good health, as sharp mind, as sharp as ever, very alert, and perfect health. If it weren't for the arthritis in her knee, she would really be perfect. She was born in Cavan, not far from here. There Thirteen in the family. Two were still born. Eleven grew up. And I can't think of eleven people more different from each other than the eleven porters. The porters seem to be a very unique breed of people. Very strong-willed, very sure of themselves. Uh, you know where you stand with them, they'll tell you what to think, yet they're as gentle as lambs at the same time. They're unique people. I've known 11 of them, all 11, my mother's brothers and all her sisters, and every one of them has been totally different from the other. Everyone very distinct, very unique. I think most of you would know my uncle Richie, Richie Porter, my mother's brother, he was lived with us in Port Hall for many, many years, so I knew him better than the other members of the family. He was sharp, sharp in mind. Uh, didn't hesitate to tell you what he thought of you. You either did things his way or you didn't do them at all. This seems to be kind of a trait of the porters. Very special sort of people. He was buying turkeys one Christmas somewhere outside Gilly Garden, and he wasn't offering enough. The owner of the turkeys didn't like the price she was getting. So she said to him, Porter, if I were your wife, I would put poison in your soup. And he said, without stopping to think, he said, Lady, if I were your husband, I would drink it. That's the type of people the porters have been. And this morning, my mother got a, a number of telephone calls from various parts of the country and from overseas. And one call came from Patty Hart, TD, from Rafo. He talked to her on the telephone. I, I was standing nearby, heard what she was saying. He said to her, later on this afternoon, I'll stop by and say hello to you. And she said to him, well, I hope I'll be in. She intends to go traveling. She has a great uh, love for traveling. She's been in many countries, Africa, Canada, United States, Mexico, Germany, Belgium, France, Spain, Italy, North Africa, and I forget where else. Been a bit everywhere. She loves traveling and still does. She looks forward to a drive in the car anywhere, any time of the day or night, she's ready to go. And that has been a kind of unique uh, trait in her life, that she loved to travel, but didn't start traveling until uh, fairly late in life. She was 78 when she first went to America, and she's been there twice since that. So she's gotten around, and she got to know the world, and she, she got to understand uh, peoples and their ways and their attitudes, and her interest in traveling and in people I think it's kept her young and kept her healthy and kept her contented and at peace. I was talking the other day to her and about being, what does it feel like to be 100 years of age? And she said, well, you know you're getting old when the candles cost more than the cake. So she's getting on there. She'll, she has 
keep her breath strong for this evening. She'll be blowing out, uh, I suppose, 100 candles. So we wish her well. I have to thank uh, those who have helped to keep her well, like Dr. Coyne and, and the nurse to come to visit her. And if they can keep her as healthy and as happy as she is at her age, well, just imagine what those doctors can do for the rest of us. So we thank them today for their care and their interest. We thank the choir for singing the special hymns, and one hymn, I believe the final one, she herself has requested at this Mass. I believe it's Hail Holy Queen. I'm not too sure, but I think that's what it is. I know it's one of her favorites anyhow. She certainly gave us all a good start in life. There were ten of us in the family, five boys and five girls, eight married, not a single divorce. So that's, she gives a good, strong start in life and, and uh, taught us in a hard way, too, sometimes, the facts of life. So we grew up loving the rosary and loving the mass, and uh, we've had no bother in the family, and she has not known any him. And the family's her grandchildren, she has 74 grandchildren, and I suppose they're all here, or most of them anyhow, at this mass. So we thank you for offering your prayers for her today, and, and I believe the Murlock Band will be here outside after this mass to do whatever they can do, and we thank them too at this time. So God bless you, and let's continue the Mass. I'd like to thank Father Doherty in a special way, a priest I have not met before, but has shown tremendous kindness and great interest in this birthday. Been to our home several times recently visiting, making sure that everything um, just fits in nicely and everything goes smoothly. So I thank you, Father Doherty, in a special way. A special <laughs> There is a second collection, but the collection is not for my mother. She wishes it was, but it's for another good cause. Let's send the mess. Uh, the collection never? No, 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 it's combined with the first one. Right, okay. Well, um, <laughs> I'd give you a shock, didn't it? Second collection. No, there isn't a second collection. You've already contributed the two together at the offertory. Well, there's nothing much more I can add to what Father Hugh has said about his mother. After all, he knows her better than I know her. But um, I must say that I, I did call yesterday to see her, and she was there on her own in the house. The others had gone off to do a bit of business here and there. And um, she came out to the door, opened the door to me, and um, brought me in, was totally in control of the situation, asked me to sit down, she checked the fire to make sure it was warm enough and eventually she went out and she brought in more coal and put it in the fire. She also checked to see that the potatoes were ready for the dinner or were getting ready for the dinner. So what person could do that at 100 years of age or 90 or 80? I'm not even that. It, also, the, the situation prompts um, it reminds me of something that was said to my father when he was about 90 years of age. He was only a young fellow compared to her. And uh, somebody said to him, Willie, if you knew you were going to live so long, would you take in better care of yourself? <laughs> you work that one out. <laughs> so anyway, our congratulations and best wishes to Mrs. Clark. And I hope she has many more years of good health and happiness. i better read you the rest of the announcements, or your spuds will be ruined. The morning mass during the week is at 10 o'clock. Father McGahey. Father McGahey is improving all the time, thank God. I was with him on Wednesday last, and my first sighting of him was walking along the corridor in the hospital linked with a physiotherapist, a female physiotherapist, if you don't mind. 
Uh, but he was getting on very well indeed, and he's making great progress. Uh, he's regarded there as their star patient. They admire him very much. So I think it's all a combination of his wonderful spirit and the prayers of all of you. And he's very grateful to you for those prayers, and I'm sure you will continue. So that's all I have to say to you this morning, or this afternoon. So I'd like Father now to give you the final blessing. The Lord be with you, may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and stay with you always. Amen. The Mass has ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you all like to join in this final hymn? It's Mrs. Clark's favorite. It's Hail Queen of Heaven for Mrs. Clark, for the, Our Lady, for the Lord himself. Let us all join in singing Hail Queen of Heaven. Hail Queen of Heaven, the ocean star, guide of the wanderer here below, thrown on life's search, we claim thy care, save us from peril and from woe. Mother of Christ, star of the sea, pray for the Spotless maid, we sinners make our prayers through thee. Remind thy son that he has paid the price of our I'm saying you have to move a bit faster, he's holding her back. Oh, right. yes. How are you doing? Scratch. You don't know, babe. Well, I hope you have a nice day and have many more years of happiness. Oh, thank you.
been married to him and sat down not to forget yourself. Uh, yes. <laughs> I enjoyed all week. <laughs> sure you did. No, no, no.
where Brady Oaks the man. Well, I worked on a Brady's farm till I lived an awful sight. Me bones were cushioned through me skin, for I worked for one tonight. One day I died and passed away, and Brady give a grin. Till you make good fertilizer, and there's plenty more like him. Saying you're welcome with me, Johnny, and you're with a decent man. What a little I knew that I had to do for Brady Ups the man. Saying you're welcome with me, Johnny, and you're with a decent man. What a little I knew that I had to do for Brady Ups the man. What a little I knew that I had to do for Brady Ups the man. Here's one you might know and you can all join on this one called Dear God. I go to church on a Sunday. The vows that I make, I break them on a Monday. The rest of the week, I do my I please then come Sunday morning I pray on my knees everybody dear God I know I'm not worthy but I need you so please won't you and help me turn by from this way. I am strong. You'll never be sorry, dear love. Each day we read in the papers of the God. But they have the nerve to ask, are we late? All together. Dear God, I know I'm not worthy, but I need you so. Please hold you to hurry. Yes, you'll never be sorry, dear God. You can take the ball, really. You can take the ball, really. You can take the ball, really. The ball, really. You don't do it. I'll do those ball rules. A little bit, sir. Feet are here on Broadway, this blessed harvest morn. But only ignorance in them for the spot where I was born. My weary hands are blistered from working cold and heat. But oh, do swing aside today through the field of ivory swing. Had I the chance to wander by our own kings of old, I'd sooner see the harp horns ring down the aisle. My mother died. Springtime, 
When Ireland and Spain was green, the neighbors said her waking was the finest ever seen. There were snowdrops and primroses while I beside her bed. And Ferris Church was crowded as the funeral mass was said. But there was a hell of Broadway building rings when they carried on her coffin down the aisle of oh, Now life's a weary puzzle I spy the top by mine I'll take the day for what it's worth And do the best I can Since no one cares or us what makes you make a moan? I go my way, I throw my pain, then smoke my life alone. Each human heart must know it's green, no bitter in the moan. So God be with you, my Katie, do 
Oh, can you well, hear Scarlet Katie Daly? We want to drink your good old Mountain Dew. Well, their old man Kitty came from Tipperary in the pioneering days of 42. Her old man, he good shot in Tombstone City. All the making of this Irish Mountain Dew. Everybody! So come down the mountain, Katie Daly. Come down from the mountain, Katie Daly. Oh, can't you hear it's calling, Katie Daly? We want to drink your old Mountain Dew. Wake up and pay attention, Katie Daly. I am the judge that's going to send you. And all the boys in court have drunk your whiskey. And tell the truth, dear kid, I've drunk some too. So, come down the mountain, Katie Daly. Come down from the mountain, Katie Daly. Oh, can't you hear us calling, Katie Daly? We want to drink your good old mountain juice. Off to jail, they took her, Katie Daly. And very soon the gates were open wide. An angel came to take her, Katie Daly. And he took her far across the great divide. So, come down the mountain, Katie Daly. Come down from the mountain, Katie Daly. Oh, can't you hear us calling, Katie Daly? We want to drink your good old mountain tea. Here we go. Come down the mountain, Katie Daly. Come down from the mountain, Katie Daly. Oh, can't you hear us calling, Katie Daly? We want to drink your good old mountain tea. Thanks very much, folks. I'm happy with you. Didn't mind that. One more, friend. Thanks very much. We're all next packet. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very As an Irish boy was leaving, leaving his own native home, crossing the broad Atlantic way, once more he was to roam. And as he was leaving his mother, while standing on the quay, he threw his arms around her waist. These were the words he said. All together now. Our mother's love's all they see. No matter where you roam, keep her while she's living. For you'll miss her when she's gone. Love her eyes. In childhood, though feeble old and gray, for you'll never miss your mother's love till she's buried beneath the clay. And as the years roll onward, I'll settle down in life. I choose the nights we I re scare. And take her for me wife. And as the kids grow older, they'll all play around my feet. And I'll teach them the very same lesson that my mother she taught to me. All the other night, <clears throat> a mother's love's lesson. No matter where you go, keep her while she's living, for you'll miss her 
when she's gone. Love for us in childhood, though feeble, old, and gray. For you'll never miss your mother's love till she's buried beneath the clay. Yes, you'll never miss your mother's love till she's buried. Good night. Good night. God bless you. Please on again. Thank you. Thank you. Treasures. 
And I used to go to the concerts and I used to sing this wee Scott song and I used to wear a kilt. <laughs> and the wee spot and the wee Tammy you know? That's what the wee song used to sing. But remember it. I'll try and remember that. <clears throat> oh, I feel a different chap today. The reason is because a bunny wee lass is in love with me and I didn't think she was. Oh, I went and popped the question and I nearly passed away when she threw her arms around my neck. And in the happy day, that's the when we lost the bunny we turned them a call. I get on my mother's engagement ring and the bunny we tart and show. Oh, I met her and to win in the cooperator call. I was the best man and she was the better of the ball. The night that popped the question, I was awfully, awfully shy. <laughs> the rain was pouring down, but she was happy, so was I. The pair of us were through it through as we landed up the stair. <laughs> the rain was running out of my breeks. But oh, I didn't care because the next one was the thing we lasted by the return of my call. I gave my mother's engagement ring and the bunny with heart and shawl. Oh, I met her at a wagon in the cooperator ball. I was the best man and she was the belle of the ball. But now that we are married and we're blessed with children three. Three wee bellies. Three wee <laughs> fella that sits upon my knee. The right wee holy terrors and they're never still for long. But they sit and listen every night to when they sing the song For she's a nice wee lass, the bunny wee lass, the bunny wee gentle my call I gave my mother's engagement ring and the bunny wee heart and shawl Oh, I met her at a wedding in the coat parade of hall I was the best man And she was the best of the ball
and said, Dear Rabban Ushu, I have learned with great pleasure that you will celebrate on the 27th of September 1987 the 100th anniversary of your birth. I send you my warmest congratulations and most sincere good wishes on this joyful occasion. A check for £250 is enclosed. Signed, the President of Ireland. This one reads His Holiness John Paul II lovingly imparts a special apostolic blessing upon Mrs. Eleanor Clark on the happy occasion of her 100th birthday, September the 27th, 1987. Given from the Apostolic Palace, Vatican City, 19 June, 1987. So given up there they mentioned a million things mom did for me things I took for granted and never could see if there's meadows for mothers for all of the deeds they have done if there's medals for mothers if mama you'd win everyone medal of honor was pinned on her there a medal for patience and kind love and care a medal for duty 
she won up above But the biggest of all Was the one for her love If there's medals For mothers For all of the deeds they have done if there's medals for mothers, Mama, you'd win everyone. Yes, Mama, you'd win everyone. Last week, I did have a lovely day. After my show, I went down to the Intercounty Hotel for a very special party, Eleanor Clark's 100th birthday party. So today in my show, I'll be playing interviews that I took with Eleanor and her family. I hope you enjoy the show, Eleanor. It's specially dedicated to you today. Then I look at you And the world's all right with me just want to look at you And I know it's gonna be A lovely day Don't forget the phone lines are open and we'd be glad to play any dedications or requests for you so give us a ring on 074-24383-007 if you're dialing from Northern Ireland. Seemed impossible to think And when someone else instead of me Always seems to know the way Then I look at you and the world. This is Una, and I've just arrived down in Lifford at the Intercounty to a very, very special birthday party. It's Eleanor Clark's 100th birthday, and I have Eleanor here with me, and she looks absolutely splendid today. Really a lovely lady, and it's great to see somebody of 100 looking so well. How are you, Eleanor? Quite a lot, don't you? Well, she's going to chat to me, and you're going to chat to me. What do you think of this big birthday party? Are you enjoying it today here? I'm just to enjoy it now. And are you thrilled to have all your family beside you? All your boys and girls have managed to make it here today. Oh, they're nearly all away and left me now. <laughs> <laughs> Only come for parties, is that right? Whenever there's something good on, they come down for the crack. Well, are you delighted to have Father Hugh home from Texas? That's right. Are you gl delighted to have Father Hugh home to see you? Yeah, yeah. And you didn't get too long on is he the star? Hmm? Is he the star of all the boys, is he? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'd say so, but what about old Charlie there beside you? I believe Charlie looks after you, spoils you every day. Ah, he could be you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is she great crack, my goodness. Charlie, listen, does she keep you going like this all day, every day? She does. She d you what? You always have an answer, is that what you're telling yeah. me? Of course, sir. <laughs> She's letting on that she can't hear me, you know, <laughs> just giving herself time to think. <laughs> well, listen, Charlie, she looks absolutely great. I don't know, I don't think you've too much nursing to do, have you, in that house? Oh, oh no, no, she'll look after herself very well. A lovely girl, and I have one of your daughters here too, Very looks very much like you, El Elizabeth Reynolds. I'm not away yet, I'm going to chat to you, I'm just reaching over to Elizabeth. How are you, Elizabeth? I'm very well, thanks. And where are you from? I'm from Anagree. Do you like to mention, I suppose you have some of the grandchildren, would they be your children? Uh, no, I have none of my children with me today. Would you like to mention their names over the air, though? They will be listening to this. Um, Martin and Paul, uh, Sheila and Claire, John and Katrina and Brenda. 
My goodness, that's just some of them. Actually, Eleanor has eight children. Now, wait for it, folks. 74 grandchildren and 54 great-grandchildren. What do you think about that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't <you> know. <laughs> but I'm telling you, you must have some advice for me now. I would like to look as beautiful as you and be as fit as you by the time I get to 100. Have you any good advice for me? Oh, I couldn't answer you that, so I didn't know what you said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, listen, what do you eat? You must eat something really good to stay looking so well. I don't know here yet. She's really having trouble hearing me. So, DCR listeners, I'm going to be shouting here for a minute. Tell me what you eat to stay so good looking. Couldn't I tell you? She couldn't tell me. Charlie, have a word. But Charlie, you tell me. How does she, what's her secret? Early to bed, early to rise. She goes to bed early, she rises early. Very good. Go to bed early, Una. That's it. I'll have to stop work and I'll have to tell Bobby McDade now about that. <laughs> need, need to get my beauty sleep. It's seven o'clock in the morning she gets up. Up at seven in the morning. And who makes the breakfast? I do. It's just spoiled. <laughs> Charlie makes the breakfast. Well, listen, I'm going to have a few words here with Hugh. Hugh is actually Father Hugh and he is working away in Texas. Now, Father, it's great for you to be home. You come home every year, I believe. Uh, yes, I come home every year about the same time, about mid-September. I stay for about four weeks. I take in the birthday every year. Uh, we never did celebrate Mother's birthday until she was 78. No one ever thought of it. She didn't think of it either. But in, in her 70th birthday, she was in America over to visit me, and the people there put on a very special birthday party for her. And during the dinner, she stood up and she said, I've been around for 78 years and never had a birthday party. I had to come among black strangers, she said, to have a birthday party. So she put us to shame and ever after we've had a special evening for her. Well, this is a great party and I think you're all really enjoying it. Tell me, tell me, have you been at many hundredth birthday parties over there or does the heat really get to them? No, I have not one. <laughs> I've been trying to believe that. Yeah. Not one hundredth birthday party. It takes us to come all the way to Port Hall and Lifford, where they really do look after themselves. They've got the right climate, the right diet, and obviously early to bed, early to rise. Would you like to put a little mes message into somebody um, on the radio? Would you like to put a dedication into your family on the radio? No, I would not. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, she would not. Am I going to have to do all the work for you? I think you're just going to, just dying to cut the cake. Well, tell me, you're waiting on a telegram coming from a very important person, I believe. Isn't that right? Yes. Oh, that's right. Yes. A telegram from the president's coming, I believe. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And I believe there's a check in it. Do you know how much that's for? No. No. I wonder what you'll spend it on. I didn't get it opened yet. She didn't get it opened yet, but I think she's plans for this. Uh, the um, Apparently, Father Doherty from Merla is coming down later on to present not only the telegram, which the President kindly sends to, out to everybody who's 100, but also a cheque for £250. So that'll be a nice uh, part of the party later on. And I believe you had a special Mass, a house Mass yesterday. Is that right, Father? Yes, we had a special Mass at Merla at 11.15 this morning. The church is filled and the parishioners tell me the first time in the history of the parish that people applauded during Mass when the mother's name is mentioned to her 100th birthday. She says, you know, that um, you know you're getting old when the candles cost more than the cake. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Well, I think we'll end on that note. Some lovely words there from Eleanor Clark. Thank you very much. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're going to hear a little bit more now of the interviews that I took down with Eleanor's family. One of her sons is a priest out in Texas, as you heard on the first interview, so I was interested in chatting to him about Texas. There is a guest here just wishing Eleanor a very happy birthday. Hello, what's your name? Charles Clark. Well, Charles, are you related to Eleanor? Yes, she's my aunt. Your aunt, so you've known her a long time? Yes, I've known her for, for years. Well, was she always as good looking? She was always the same. No change on her. No change on her at all? No change on her. She's a great woman. And do you remember visiting her when you were young? Yes, I used to go down to Port Hall regular. My goodness. Well, she's having a terrific day. And are you staying for the party? Yes, I am. 
And Father here has just been chatting to us and telling us something very interesting. Apparently, uh, in his parish, they have a radio station and a television station. It's a religious station that just broadcasts um, religious programs daily on both the airwaves, on radio, and on television. I'm very interested to know a little bit more about that, Father. Yes, uh, I'm rector of the cathedral in Corpus Christi, and at the cathedral we have our own uh, television station on the air for 11 hours, 7 days a week. And we have our own radio station on 18 hours a day, 7 days a week. So that keeps us fairly busy. We do all kinds of programs, interviews of important people passing through, call-in programs, discussion programs, uh, talks and debates of all kinds, religious music of all kinds, uh, televised or broadcast masses, uh, different functions of all kinds from the cathedral and from the city. Uh, we pick up about everything that would interest Catholics in South Texas. And our diocese, the Diocese of Corpus Christi, uh, has the only diocese that owns its own either radio or television station at the moment in America. So we have a first there. My God. In memories of times I will never forget my days in old Dunny Dawn. Well, that's dedicated to all the clerks down there in Port Hall. I'm sure you're having great fun down in the kitchen down there today with Eleanor. Well, now we're going back to hear some more of the interviews that I took at the birthday party. George. And you are a son, another son, is that right? Yes, yes. And do you live near Mummy? And I went two miles from her. Well, tell me, was she always as good looking? Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, I was dim. I was better looking than what you. <laughs> I think these are all good looking, to be honest. Honest to goodness. Well, listen. Do you live near Lifford? Uh, we do. I have uh, about a mile and a half from Lifford. And you farmer? I know, but uh, two miles from where uh, from where my mother lives. Uh. Two miles. So you're able to visit her often. Oh, I visit her once a week or maybe twice a week. That's dedication. I'm telling yeah. you. Are you a farmer? Yeah, I am. Yeah. You are indeed. What do you farm? Uh, a farm, I have a six acre farm. You're a busy man then? Uh, no, not too busy, no. I, 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 uh, I don't uh, do anything on the farm. So. Well, at least you have time for interviews on DCR, even in the middle of your soup course. So I'm going to go on around the table now. And the next person I spoke to was Father John Doherty, who was there specially to present the telegram from the President and also the cheque for £250 to Eleanor Clark. The telegram, is that right? I'm going to present the message from the president, that's right. When did it arrive? Oh, it arrived about two weeks ago. It Ooh. arrived to the parish priest, who unfortunately is ill at the moment. He's in hospital. You in better Portland. give him a mention. What's his name? Father McGahey is his name. Father Willie McGahey. And he suffered a stroke. They're not chapping, clapping for Father no, here no, now, no. I must tell you. They're, they're clapping this time for the excellent musicians that are playing away in the background. And um, are you enjoying the party, Father? I am indeed. So I'm, I'm not very long here, but it's very nice. And the music in the background is lovely too. Lovely traditional stuff. Well, tell me now, do you visit Eleanor often? Well, uh, we call to, to give her the sacraments every month, you know. But I paid her a special visit yesterday morning, and uh, she was in the house on her own and uh, she came out and opened the door to me brought me in and uh, made me sit down we had a great talk and then she decided that she would have to put more coal in the fire so off she went put the shovel of coal put the coal in the fire and then her next preoccupation were the potatoes and she said no it's a bit too early to put them on for the dinner I'll wait for another while so she's a marvellous lady you know that she's able to do so much well I think It's my mother's birthday today I'm on my way with the lovely 